Hey, so what I want to do today is I want to work on this choke. It's actually not my choke. It's um, Bill the Grill Cooper's choke, the infamous BTG. Um, we trained together for a couple of years, um, maybe 10 years ago, and he helped me clean up this Bravo choke that he used to use in competition a lot. And I really, really liked it. And it kind of fits in with these um, chokes where we're uh, revealing grips. So I'm going to change it as well. So it's also mixed in with more of something that I do personally. But I'm going to start with Bill's choke. So this is full credit to Bill, obviously, because really I'm just doing his choke from the outset and then we're going to mix it up. Okay, so first we're going to go back to the knee ride, right? What I want to do is I want to pull the jacket out. But I want to pull it out and across the back of the neck so it feeds, right? And then I'm going to switch hands. So when I do this, I can go underneath the guy's arm here. Likely his arm is going to be blocking himself like this. Okay, so it doesn't matter if I do that. The more likely um, situation is that you're going to come straight through and feed, look, not behind the gi, pull it out and you're over the hand. Okay, so I don't want this loose grip because this is going to slip out or it's going to extend my wrist. So I need a nice chunk of this, so I'm going to pull it in, wrap my wrist over. Okay, and then here's the rest of Bill's choke. Is most of the guys do this, right? They grab the top of the lapel and they try to choke, but it's in the skull or it's on the jaw, or it's in an area where it doesn't complete. So to get a little more play out of the gi, what he used to do is grab this triangle at the end of the gi, what normally would be at the bottom, and then wrap it around. So he gets much more play out of it to be able to then wrap that wrist in, pull the hand back, and then choke the guy. So it's really about this one. Okay, so the next one I wanna do is, I wanna make sure I still have this grip. So instead of doing this, what I can do is go inside the gi. And I'm gonna go a double underhand choke, which is a discussion we can talk about later. But really what this is, is a, a nice kind of easy way to execute a choke, where most guys do under over. If you go double under, you get a soft choke where it doesn't feel like you're getting choked, right? So one, okay. Then two, I'm not gonna even grab this one again. I'm gonna wrap my fingers inside this part of the collar, okay? Get as deep as I can. Turn both wrists under, and then work towards the mount as I start to choke this guy here. Okay, so I really want to turn my wrist like this, and then once I start to lose my balance, for example, because my hands are occupied right now, I'm going to put my head on the ground in the direction that I'm going to. And beyond that, if you're having a lot of difficulty, because most guys that are learning to choke, they there's a lot of detail in how to use the hand position and how to make the choke work, right? A lot of, there's like, you gotta pull this apart, you gotta pull the thing back, you gotta have your grip close together. There's a lot of little micro details, but none of them really make sense if you describe them. They don't give an image of what you should be doing. There is one choke, however, that does give an image that makes it very clear without much description how to do a choke, and that's the bow and arrow. It's pretty clear, right? Bow, draw the arrow back. So if you're doing an arrow, in any of your chokes, so watch, I'll do it on the standard lapel this time. I'm not going to do anything with this hand. I'm only going to turn my wrist under, so it's the, again that motorcycle type grip, and I'm going to draw this hand back, so I'm pulling it through. Okay, if you focus on nothing but this from the outside, especially if you're a beginner, you should have a much higher hit rate in your choke than if you're trying to mess around with all the other further details, because it's hard to coordinate all of them at the same time. So if you just imagine that bow and arrow, look, wrist, draw the arrow back, that'll help you hit the choke. And if you feel any bone in the jaw, then you're not perfectly on the choke, but of course you can separate the jaw and then enter the choke. All right, but if you're looking for clean, like concise and accurate choke, you wanna feel that nice squishy part of the neck. Now I know some of you guys are using like different tools, you probably don't have a partner, but if you can do it like this, single-handed and draw the hand back, and just practice getting underneath your gi, right? So if you want to get underneath this part of your gi, that'll be a target for you when you come back to training to know where the, where the choke actually sets. So look, here's a mix with Bill's choke. One, two, underhanded. One, two, right? Underneath the armpit, this is a legal grip. As long as it's not, like in IBJJF, you're not allowed to do this, right? So you can go up on the inside of the collar. But IBJJF right now is closed and you're in your living room. So go with the illegal grips. Go 
Try out all the types of things that you normally aren't allowed to do to see what you can create. And then work backwards into what's legal later, okay? So again, under, under, and focus on this hand, this hand, drawing back with a bow and arrow, and use your head for balance. So it looks like this, I know it's very closed, but it's this hand drawing through. We call that the AK-47 in the code of code.